In this demonstration, we're going to show you how to use the arcade programming language that comes with ArcGIS Pro to create a custom symbology expression. So as you can see, in this particular uh, instance of ArcGIS Pro, I've loaded up a, a very simple project here uh, with a map that contains uh, just a single operational layer called the parcels layer. And of course, there's a base map here as well. Um, I've also opened up the attribute table for the parcels layer. Uh, we're going to kind of start there. Um, and so what you can see here is uh, you have your typical set of parcel information. Uh, there's a property ID, a geo ID, ownership information, including ownership name, legal area, legal description, land value, improvement value, market value, address. So there's, there's a whole bunch of uh, columns here uh, related to, to parcel data. For this particular demonstration, we are going to focus in on this land value column. Now you can do the same thing for the improvement value or the market value. Uh, but for this particular demonstration, we're gonna focus in on this land value column. Now you can see this is a numeric data type column uh, that contains numeric data. Uh, and you can very easily uh, create a color-coded map using that land value column. Uh, you could create a graduated color map and it would, uh, of course, break your data into groups based upon uh, you know, some type of classification of, your, uh, of this particular column. But in this particular instance, let, let's say we have a situation where we want to actually portray this information, this land value column, as categorical information. So in other words, we want to develop uh, categories of low, medium, and high land value. Now, the traditional way of doing this uh, would be to add a new column to your feature class to hold that information. Uh, you would then populate that column. So for each row, you'd populate that as low, medium, and high based on whatever uh, definition you give to those categories and then of course you'd have to keep that data updated as well so as your data changes or you know if the rules change for how you want to assign the categories if that change you would need to update um, that column each time uh, your data changed in some way uh, and so one of the things that arcade allows you to do is it allows you to um, dynamically render your data so based on some type of existing data we can render our data in, in new ways uh, and in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to develop that uh, unique value rendering of low, medium, and high values, land values in this case, using Arcade. So again, we're focusing in on this land value column. I'm going to go ahead and close the attribute table. And from there, I'll go to Symbology and then select Unique Values. Now, remember, this data doesn't currently exist. Um, you, of course, have the land value column, but we don't have the categorical low, medium, and high representations of that data. Now, when I initially uh, switch over to unique values, it picks up the first field that it finds here. So that being prop ID, which isn't uh, useful uh, for us in this uh, circumstance. So there's a button just to the right of that called set an expression, uh, which will load up my expression builder. There's only one option here for language, that being arcade. Uh, your title is going to default to custom. Uh, you can change that uh, as needed uh, if you'd like, and it'll also provide a default value as you build your expression. On the left-hand side are your, of course, your fields, your, your columns that are attached to your feature class. And that's the information that we just looked at. And then on the right-hand side are your functions. Right? These are Arcade functions. Arcade comes with several dozen uh, built-in functions that allows you to manipulate existing data in different ways. Right? And that might be a set, you, know, they're, they're, you can filter this by different types of, of functions. So we have numeric functions, text functions, date functions, geometry functions. Uh, so you can, you can filter your data and, and find functions that are specific to the type of data that you want to uh, manipulate. Uh, in this particular instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a pre-built expression. And so I'll go to the import button. And then there's a, an expression here called custom symbols land value. I'll hit OK. And that's going to load in to my expression window um, an expression that, I've, that I have built in the past to kind of simplify the process for this demonstration. And this is a, um, you know, this is a win function. Uh, win is a function that comes uh, with Arcade. And it's used uh, kind of as a, as a substitute for uh, an if, if, else, if uh, statement. Right? It's a simpler form of that for situations where you need to do multiple comparisons. Um, so we're gonna, right now we're going to focus in on the first part of this, uh, this function. And so the first part of the function uh, includes dollar sign feature dot land value. Let's kind of talk about that for just a moment. Dollar sign feature is a global variable that's part of Arcade. And this global variable allows you to pull attribute information from either your feature class or from your table. So in this case, 
uh, when we're referencing the land value column uh, and we're using dollar sign feature, we're, we are in essence uh, telling ArcGIS Pro that we, for, you know, for each feature in this layer, I want to get the land value. And if it's less than 20,000, I'm going to assign it the category of low. So any land value that's less than 20,000, we're going to assign that to a category of low. Now building on that, the second part of this, if the land value is greater than or equal to 20,000 and this two ampersands, that's a, an operator for the and uh, in Arcade. So if the land value is greater than or equal to 20,000 and the land value is less than 75,000, then we assign a category of medium. And then if the land value is greater than 75, greater than or equal to 75,000, we assign it the category of high. There's also a fourth category here of NA. That would be used for situations where you have a feature that doesn't fit neatly into one of these other categories. Right? You might have a null value or you might have some strange, op, um, strange outlier in your data set. You might have a negative value or something of that sort. Uh, so we need to be able to capture all potential, uh, all potential uh, values. Now, this is going to be run uh, dynamically on the fly. We are not populating the underlying attribute table in any way. All right, so we're not having to add a column and populate the values of the column. Instead, we're going to just use Arcade to, uh, to render this on the fly. All right, now, from here, I'm going to want to verify. It says everything's valid here. If there was an error in my code, it would present that information here. Uh, and so since my expression is valid, I can go ahead and hit OK. And it will go ahead and run that Arcade expression and generate the unique values. Now it will by default assign you um, just default symbols, which in this case are definitely not appropriate. <laughs> no, these colors are not, are not great for what we're trying to represent here. So I'm gonna need to man manually manipulate this a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and move the low category uh, down to the bottom. And then I'm gonna assign uh, a little bit better symbols here. Nothing special, but we'll just do red for high. We'll do an orange for medium, and we'll do a yellow for low. All right, and so that's that, right. That's the the um, a, a good example here of using uh, Arcade to be able to uh, dynamically render a, a unique value uh, symbology. So you've got your high, your medium, and your low values. And again, this information does not exist in the under underlying attribute table. Right, we've developed a custom field here called custom symbols underscore land value, and it'll show up in your list of fields like all the other attribute columns do. But that field doesn't exist in the attribute table. It's a dynamically rendered field. Uh, and so again, the advantage of doing something like this is that you can, you know, you can do this on the fly without having to, uh, um, without having to manipulate your underlying data sets and then be able to have to re-manipulate that data as your data changes. Right? We're doing this all on the fly and of course you can very easily make changes to this, right? If you wanted to uh, alter the, those numeric categories for your data, it'd be very easy to do that in your expression builder. Uh, so it's just a, a much simplified process uh, and it's one of the things that Arcade is very good at doing is for those types of situations where you need to manipulate your existing underlying data to produce some type of new result. In this case, you know, a custom symbology uh, type of uh, rendering. It's very good at doing those types of things. All right, so that's it for this time. I appreciate you guys joining me and uh, we'll see you next time.